the field of AI and machine learning is is dynamic. It's evolving every day, um, and and you know, and what it means when you say AI and AI and machine learning has also evolved over time. Right? What is mainstream AI and what has been on the fringes is something that's evolving every single day. What you see in this movie, Ex Machina, a super intelligent humanoid robot. Uh, arguably, a lot of people do. Right? Uh, this. I, I don't know how many of you have seen this, and, and I highly, highly recommend this, um, what it can be. Uh, and if all of you are following the news, you've probably seen, um, you know, all these uh, little posts about Boston Dynamics and and how they're developing the humanoid robots that can do a backflip, that can intelligently go and pick a lock and open a drawer. Um, I think. You know that that's one way of thinking about AI, um, but but equally there are also uh, what you don't consider to be AI, right? Uh, things that seem more mundane. Uh, you know that could be uh, you know your Alexa sitting sitting on your desktop. Although that's arguable whether or not that's AI, um, but but you have that and you have uh, you know your um, Kind of intelligent drive shift in in your uh, in your cars, and you have a whole host of things that just work behind the scenes. So yes, yeah, so the question is, what do you envision when I say AI? Do you envision this super intelligent humanoid robot, or a self driving car, which seems less ominous? Um, but this image you see there, which is Google's um, you know early prototype of a fully functioning self driving car, um, is another commonly example of an intelligent system that learns uh, according to its conditions that picks up uh, its environmental variables and, and and acts on it if you haven't watched this i highly recommend this movie as well please go watch the alpha go movie but uh, but this is another uh, you know fantastic example of interesting work being being done in this field of ai um, google bought this company called deep mind a few years ago and uh, which developed uh, AlphaGo, uh, uh, which is an entire application just to play uh, against humans in in the game of Go, which is a you know very complicated, uh, you know fairly simple in its rules, but very complicated in its execution and in the space of possibilities, much much more complicated than chess, incidentally. Um, and and this is another kind of uh, milestone in the development of AI. Um, that uh, that people held up and commonly said that this uh, is you know represents the pinnacle of what you know humans can and and are working towards achieving. So which of these do you think of when you talk about or when you think about AI uh, as a field? And and how close is all of this to reality? Right. The short answer is it is all of this and none of this. Right now, what is artificial intelligence as a field? It is uh, again, like I said, it, it's it's a moving goalpost. It's not a static field, but artificial intelligence as a field is an umbrella term. It's quite commonly used to represent a series of of tools, a series of techniques, and a series of problems that we're trying to solve. As you can see in this particular image. Um, there are various things that we talk about when we talk about AI, right? Obviously, we talk about, you know, let's assume there is this artificial intelligence and, and in the best context in which we, th we can think about whether or not it makes sense as an intelligent agent is in its interaction to us as human beings, right? Um, there, is, there are a host of, um, you know, sensor activities that, that uh, that artificial intelligence machines perform, right? So they hear us, they see us, um, they interpret what they see and what they hear, right? And all of that is uh, contained within computer vision and hearing. So if you go, and I'm I'm kind of going anti-clockwise. If you want to follow along on on the image that you see on the screen, right? So speech recognition handwriting recognition ocr which you commonly use um, you know in in everything uh, leading up to capture and all these other images that you use for authentication of your cards and things like that um, image and video recognition facial recognition with these little squares and and your um, you know your uh, uh, 
face id unlocking your iphones and so on all of these are a class of problems that are uh, contained within you know your speech recognition handwriting recognition and all and 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 your basically cognition right it's 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 perceiving it's it's interacting and it's starting to perceive right now moving on up the perceiving scale you then have to interpret a lot of this right and uh, and much more and incidentally in the class of problems that hard problems that you face within ai and ml natural language processing is often much harder than computer vision and hearing right now computer vision has its own set of problems vision has never been clean but image data doesn't prove nearly as complicated as for example um you know speech recognition and that doesn't prove nearly as complicated as for example uh, natural language understanding right which tends to be less rule based and more, more semantic right? machine translation and actually even sentiment analysis now there are simple tools for sentiment analysis that you can start to approximate simply based on positive and negative words of twitter and on, or you can start to get really really sophisticated combine these techniques right so that's the next sphere right we get into perceiving then we get into okay, so how do we actually make a decision how do we um you know uh, make sense of this how do we interpret all of this information right because remember the stuff orange that we talked about computer vision and hearing and then the stuff in gray which is the nlp part these are just intent and and, uh, and processing input and perception rather now we're getting into fear of how do we start decisions based on this right and this is where machine learning comes in your simple recommender systems um you know data mining techniques your reinforcement learning supervised and unsupervised learning deep learning all of this constitutes machine learning right and then get into even more com uh, combinatorial uh, models of decision making right? which uh, which are case based which are expert systems and so on um now this is the decision layer right your machine learning and decision layer and finally and probably the hardest of all of these problems is the last one which is the stuff in green which is the responding part right because getting information from us you know and and for machines to process this information was enough challenge for to learn from it and make a lot of sense without us explicitly listing a set of rules was also a hard challenge in machine learning but now we get into a class of problems which are generative what do i mean by generative which means synthesizing speech which means generating speech which is generating actual natural language right uh, some of you may may have heard about turing test but turing test quite commonly um, in 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 a simplified sense basically says that you know the point at which you know a machine can generate um, information or or, or or a sentence that um you know that that fools humans where where which achieves a level of um sophistication that humans are confused about whether or not it was generated by a man or machine um that's when we believe that the machine has has achieved cognition and now that's a that's a hard hard problem to solve because that involves a whole set of things right that involves understanding context that involves uh, you know the input element that involves the processing element the thinking element and finally the responding element right so it is as uh, you know the reason we have this 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 circle that's listed here it right, is just to um, talk about the fact that when we say ai we don't mean one tool we don't mean one technique we we mean a class of problems we mean a class of problems that are sufficiently hard that are all related to the area of machines doing what humans do that right? artificial uh, intelligence so the you know artificially being as intelligent as humans now all of us being human centric talk about it from a human centric perspective and and that's why we have this this slew of techniques and technologies and things like that are listed there right. now what does this have to do with what we are doing and what we're learning um you know as you can see from this all of this breaks down into you know a set of uh, techniques and a set of activities that we do and a set of applications right now machine learning um typically is a uh, 
all in thing approximate task is, is uh, uh, data now, what kind of a pattern is, is being presented with that data learn some kind of emergent behavior or emergent pattern and make a future looking or a predictive decision on how something else is going to behave at that how recommender systems work that's how a lot of supervised learning works unsupervised learning is just uh, another class of problems where you take um, data that's unlabeled and try to make a decision based on that now all of that machine learning that series of techniques uh, is not you know by itself means nothing what it enables us to do right, is create systems in this case machines like recommender systems that are doing what would otherwise be done by humans right let's take the case of netflix a commonly used example right now earlier if you needed to um, recommend a movie to somebody right uh, typically what what you would do is you would go into you know either a dvd rental place or a cd rental place you would request um you know if you knew what you were wanted to watch you would obviously go and ask for it but if you didn't you would go and fairly in a fairly straightforward way ask for a recommendation so you would go and ask the clerk standing behind the counter hey what do you think i should watch today or what what would you recommend now you know the person behind the counter is going to say one of the two or three things Obviously, option number one is, hey, this new movie came in, right? You might want to watch it because it seems very popular. Other people seem to like it, right? So you might want to watch this movie. Or you might recommend something uh, to the person who is, who is speaking uh, based on your knowledge of them, right? You might see them and you might say, hey, I, I see you come in each, you know, nearly every week and every week you tend to take romantic comedies. Why don't you try this new romantic comedy that that you you probably haven't watched? You know, here you go. Or you might make it, or the clerk might make a snap judgment based on what you've said, and say, mm, you look like the kind of person who would like, you know, action movies based on the fact that you're wearing this kind of a, a death metal or a rock T-shirt, um, based on the fact that. Um, you know, you look like you play a lot of video games. Uh, you're at the right age and demographic that that might like these kind of movies. And based on all of these inputs, I'm making a judgment that you might be the kind of person who might want to watch this. And therefore, I will make this recommendation. And I'm not going to recommend Pride and Prejudice or something of that sort, which seems like a period British drama that you might find boring. Now, all of these things being automated and being done without your explicit knowledge is exactly what machine learning has uh, accomplished through a series of sophisticated recommender systems at Netflix. Right? It's either making a decision based on other people's or based on what's new and, and what is popular, um, or based on what you have previously watched, or based on what people like you like to watch. Right? And all of these um, you know, inputs taken together forms the basis of a recommender system which is a machine learning technique so similarly all of these other machine learning techniques that we talk about tend to take a series of inputs and in a fairly sophisticated way help you to build systems or machines that do exactly what we do as human beings or as close to it as possible in terms of an approximation now expert systems or case-based reasoning are variants of this. They don't quite work in the same way, but they achieve similar kind of end goals and objectives. So, you know, when, when we talk about AI and machine learning, I mean, we talk about machine learning as, as a field and, and how we should be thinking about it. Now, remember, this is a very, very, very small sliver of the overall class of problems we talk about. So this decision-making function, all of machine learning, really is the heart of what people say when they talk about AI. Now, again, we use the, the phrase AI and ML, but in practice, ML is a subset of AI. AI is the larger field. 
um, with the objective of, of achieving um, you know, full intelligence in an, in an automated system. And machine learning is just the learning part of that. Now, as you can, as you can see in this circle, there, is, there are a series of steps before the learning, right, which is sensing and then perceiving. And there's a series of steps after, which is the acting and then responding. Right? Now, in, in classical you know, engineering terms, that's the input and the output phase. Now, what we've built with machine learning is just the core decision-making engine, but then we have a whole series of input and a whole series of output mechanisms. Why would I, you know, why am I not trivializing these input and output areas? It's because ultimately your entire machine learning model or everything that you build around in terms of your decision-making system is completely useless without sufficiently sophisticated and clean data that coming in and a sufficiently sophisticated way to get information out. In other words, garbage in, garbage out. So it's actually very essential for us to know that while the focus of a lot of AI is on the machine learning layer, and, and in practice, that's what a lot of AI engineers spend a majority of their time on, the sphere of this, this whole area extends far beyond that. It extends early on to you know, a lot of the sensing and perceiving and later on to a lot of acting. Now, I hope that sufficiently demystified what all the, these areas are and what we talk about when we talk about AI and ML. But I do want to um, you know, talk to you very briefly about how this maps to what are the kind of careers and, and opportunities and job opportunities and things like that out there that are emerging as a result in this field? 